Hey guys, massive trigger warning for ED and god knows what else. Honestly, if you are easily triggered, please don't watch this video. Try to fight the thing telling you I won't be triggered and literally just turn it off. You know, you won't be missing much if you do. Okay. It's been warned. <laughs> I just wanted to be sort of like dreadfully honest here. So sort of say everything that's going through my head, probably end up crying, but I, I kind of want to, because I want to vent a bit, and I'm feeling really low. And you know what? You guys deserve honesty, and some of what I say tonight about the behaviours I've been using might shock you. I'm really ashamed of them. I'll probably end up taking this video down due to so much shame, but at the same time I think the shame is feeding the shame, you know, I think the stigma of different eating disorders that some behaviours are shameful and some are somehow something to be proud of and it means that people with like, for example, people that abuse laxatives don't want to admit that part of their eating disorder because they feel like that's a shameful behaviour, there is, they feel like restriction is somehow like something to be proud of or whatever. Um, so I guess I will challenge that uh, and uh, go into this. So I'm exhausted and tired and I keep saying to everyone I'll turn it around, I'll get back to normal and I will not let myself go impatient and I believe it. But there's part of me that has noticed that things aren't turning around. And it's like I'm hoping to change my menu and I'm hoping to stop certain behaviours but they're continuing and every day I'm thinking tomorrow I'll have a bit more and I'm not, I'm not and I'm thinking I'll start gaining weight again soon. I'm still losing at the moment and I know it doesn't look like I've lost weight and like things like that but I feel almost as if I have again and doing that makes me concentrate on my weight more and like going through old photos on Facebook and things and seeing all the different changes the way that it's like January the 26th and I'm there on a treadmill looking pretty underweight and then it goes like July the 21st or whatever it is and suddenly I'm one of the biggest probably at the time the biggest weight I'd ever been and like I'd been made to do that, that's when I was on home leave from hospital and there were just massive changes and it was weird to see like a few months apart it's huge changes, so many comments telling me I look nice and I didn't, like I didn't look extremely overweight but I honestly do not think that I look attractive there at all you know, I don't think that I looked healthy. I reckon I was the kind of healthy that was slightly borderline too big. You know, people look at it and they comment with, oh, you're looking so good because they want to encourage you of, you look healthy, but they're sort of thinking, I'd like to be healthy. Healthy weights do look good, but maybe not quite that big, you know? And I know that and I'm very aware of it because I don't have body dysmorphia. I really don't, um, but, I think I do look too big in that picture and I think people will probably be looking at me now and thinking I look a little bit too big and I don't think that I look overweight, okay, don't get me wrong, as I said, not body dysmorphic, I don't think I look overweight but I just see certain parts of me where I think other people probably wouldn't want it, particularly when I know that a lot of my viewers are anorexic and some of them don't have body dysmorphia and some of them actually think that too underweight is a good look. And for example my cheeks and the fact that when I talk I get these little lines here and I never used to get them and yeah that affects me and I am finding this hard to do and when I look through some pictures of me like from hospitals there's like people around me that have got like the tube in and I remember having the tube in and I wish I was still on it as you guys know and it's not because I want to give up the responsibility of eating it's not because I never want to eat again and it's not because I want to prove myself anorexic it's because eating is so complicated and hard to cope with 
and my main issue isn't with my weight. I do have issues with my weight, obviously, but it's with food. It's the relationship with food that throws me off when I go home because before I even decide I want to lose weight, food goes out the window or in the loo or in me and then in the loo, you know. It's just like balls to crap, just everything just disintegrates around me as food gets more stressful and then I think, you know what, this is so stressful, I just won't eat. Um, and it is, it always, and then because of those behaviours I end up losing weight and then it becomes about crap, if I'm going to go into hospital anyway, I'll just try to lose as much weight as possible before I go into hospital. You guys have probably picked up on that little recurring thing that happens when I'm at the hospital. And this is a peculiar mix because I'm both in hospital and not in a secure unit and I could end up going there and I'm the opposite of how I have been in the past where I've been convinced that I'm going into hospital so I need to lose as much weight as possible before that point. This time I'm convinced I'm not going into hospital and that I'll stop losing weight etc and yet I'm not and I've not given up my behaviours. Even though I'm convinced that I will any day now, I haven't. And I keep thinking, I improved yesterday, like for example yesterday I managed dinner, but I didn't manage most of my breakfast, most of my lunch, or any of my snack. Wait no, I managed a small bit of my snack. Actually, that's not very much. <laughs> and then today I was like, I'm going to manage really well today. Um, I had a small bit of my breakfast and, um, guys, and a sip of milk from my snack, from my snack, bearing in mind I have soy milk and it's very low calorie, and all of my lunch, well except like a load of butter but they didn't know that, but all of my lunch really, so I thought that that was like okay, and then none, no, almost, no, less than half of my dinner, and then didn't keep in some of my dinner. Guys! Mm. They're very playful tonight. Girls! Oh dear. Sorry. And um, every time I'm being weighed, my weight is going down, and I'm like, why is it doing that? But that it really does feed itself the way that people say it does, you know, because now I'm like, God, I want to lose weight, but at the same time, God, I don't want to, but I almost feel as if I'm much smaller than I am, like, I, I, don't know, I'm watching myself more closely, picturing what I look like when I come out of doors more closely and looking at my shadow more closely or... I don't know. I don't know. I haven't even lost a lot of weight, you wouldn't be able to tell. But... I'm just exhausted. My activity is getting less and less as usual. I'm say the opposite to so many anorexics. But then do I even have anorexia? I'm tired and I haven't got it all out of my system. You know? I don't want to keep eating. This isn't going to work and I know it's not, like Ashley House, where I am, it's not going to get me to recover. I know it's not because there's too much stuff that I still fantasise about and I still want to get out of my system. And I'm tired. I'm very tired of the fact that nothing has changed. You guys think stuff has changed. Because I'm telling people. Nah, it's not. 
I'm telling people with the security of knowing that I'm already in hospital. I have staff around me. At home, I didn't have staff around me and I was trying to stay out of hospital and that's why I wasn't telling people. I'm not telling people asking them for help. I'm telling people to inform them. I'm not even informing them with the hope for help. I don't know why I bother informing them. So that I don't hide it. So that I don't have to go through the effort of hiding it. And so that other clients don't find out. I can't do it. I wish that my main channel was how I was all the time, how I am all the time. Um, and I totally believe passionately in everything that I say on my main channel, but... And I believe it for me as well, like I take it on and I try to put it towards myself as well because I don't want to be hypocritical, but... I am so wrapped up in my own stuff. I don't have time for friends. I don't have time to tell my friends what's wrong with me. I don't have time to listen to them tell me what's wrong with them. I'm the kind of person that gives nothing in return. I really am. Maybe that's why a vlog is good for me. I don't even answer most of my Tumblr messages. I'm too tired. I can't... I'm too tired. <laughs> and I don't know what my t potassium is doing right now. It's probably going down because, honestly, I've been binging and purging. I know, it seems weird, right? I've gone so long not doing that. Like, even far before the hospital stuff, it was always restricting, but... I do it with the hope of getting everything out of my stomach. I, I eat like part of dinner and then I'm thinking to myself like, I don't know, if I binged and purged I would probably get rid of the last of it because every time I'd be purging I'd be bringing up the little bit more of dinner and so just nothing comes up but yellow stuff. It's gross. But yeah and going out and buying binge food at night and purging it. It's amazing really. I'm getting away with that in hospital. Nothing has changed. But it's so tiring. When I binge and purge, I purge every 10 minutes, as long as it takes to get rid of all the food. I don't even necessarily get food that I want, like earlier I was like, oh, I really don't want to binge and purge. And I like, set up the bathroom downstairs because it's annoying having to move from my room to the bathroom up here and I'm always scared that like, People will figure me out, or disturb me, or whatever else. So I did it in the bathroom. I brought down a bag of stuff and put it in the bathroom and got a cup of tea. And I was running the bath and I was like, Ugh, I do not want to binge and purge tonight. I'm tired. I wish I could just have a bath. And I literally had to force myself to eat because I just felt like so sick and I was like, oh, I don't want to binge and purge. And then I purged and then I had to force myself to eat again and force myself to purge again and I was like, Ugh. I did it. Because I don't binge because I can't resist food, I binge because I want to purge.
hopefully I'll stop going to Tesco soon so hopefully that behaviour will stop starting tomorrow but who knows might not stop but meanwhile that's something by the way I'm not being honest about and they don't know about so actually truly nothing's changed it's not about weight it never was I'm so tired I'm very tired. I'm not suicidal, but there's so often when I just wish that I didn't have to recover, I would just be recovered. But do I even want that? I don't know. Like, of course I do, but who even knows? It's all so distorted and broken. I just never want to leave my room. But if I did decide never to leave my room, I'd be back in hospital before you could count to three. The reason I'm in, in here still is because of my pets. If it wasn't for them, I'd be in another place. And I would be stressed and I'd be gaining weight and be being force fed and be far more miserable than I am here. But I like, I prefer this kind of misery, the misery of feeling helpless and not knowing what to do and thinking that food is all that matters. There isn't a hospital that is like this reckless trying to fight them and no control and I don't like that I hate that but this part where I'm not in a hospital but I am sort of using behaviors and things are going downhill I wish that people would just leave me to do this part and if it kills me it kills me and if I get over it I get over it but no one will ever leave me to do this part in the long term I'll be thankful but Right now, I just want to be left. I just want to use whatever behaviours I want. I want to go out into the real world and... I don't want to use behaviours I want. I want to tube feed myself. I just want to not even think about it. Just... Not do it. And I am tired. It would be so much easier if I wasn't alive right now. But it wouldn't be easier because I wouldn't be around to feel the benefit, but you know what I mean. It's hard to imagine that this is going to continue on and on with no, without ever changing. Because nothing has changed. Nothing has changed. I'm the same as the same as the thirteen year old that first uploaded videos. Underneath this little image of me is like Loads of little thumbnails from videos of me on the phone crying, all of me like this, or like this, or like this, just talking and going, whining and moaning, every video the same as this one, I mean it really is, they're all the same, all my vlogs, they're all the same. You know why? Guess what I'm gonna say? Because nothing's changed. 
I'm still lumped with my mum, who I really don't like. Tired. I'm so tired. I wish I didn't care. This idea of relaxing is just such a lovely thing. The idea of going on holiday and sitting on a beach and not caring. It's a problem with an eating disorder is you can't escape it. Or with a mental illness, physical illness, illness in general, you just can't escape it. You can't leave it behind, it's not like a bad friend or something that you can just cut out. It's not like a bad person you can leave behind. Just clings to you. Taints everything. Little baby rats and a neglected bird. With a toe missing. Oh. Sometimes I just wish I could like cuddle into someone. I have this image when I'm upset. When I'm closed up and I'm upset. A member of staff comes over and I imagine just like going to them and cuddling in and just okay, and just, just letting them hug me. <laughs> and letting them just soak in my sadness that I didn't have to. And they come over and they see me like this. And I seem angry. And I seem sad. And they say, do you want a hug? And I go. Are you sure? And they touch me and I go. Because that's the way it has to be. It's too hard. It's all too hard. I don't care about trying to sleep. I don't care. <sighs> Look at me being all dramatic. Whispering the last syllable. socialization in some way, teaching me how to be dramatic and get my emotions across in mystical ways. Fascinating, deep, meaningful ways. I may as well have read out a poem. Even the bringing attention to the way that I'm talking. My mind is not me. My mind controls me. There is no me. There's just a mind, a living thing. I can't control it. Because I don't exist. But 
pictures of me and my friends. Two friends. Don't know why I have them up. May as well have loads of pictures of me all around the room. It's what I care about, isn't it? It's what I put the effort into. Oh, little anonymous messages all around the room. Too tired to do this. I don't care. I hate the fact that in my head I'm like, I wish I could just lay down in a hospital bed and just like be like put on a drip and just fade in and out of life and just deal with it. And then I'm like, oh no, because then I'll have muscle wastage. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm like, no, I can't do that because then I have last way to stitch and I need to do this and this and this. Right. But it's too hard to continue doing this, this and this. self-conscious of everything. I'm in control of everything and out of control of everything. I'm scared of crying and frowning like this because of these lines that cause hair because my mum has them. So every now and then I have to get like that. Try and iron it out. A stupid scar that shows up in my forehead when I frown. This here. But you can't see it. <laughs> Exciting stuff for you. do not know. I am nobody to be inspired by. None of you guys should want to be like me, ever. And none of you guys should want a friend like me. Because I am not a valuable friend, I promise you that. I'm not valuable in any way. I'm just a leech on society, I'm nothing. I have no contribution. I have videos. <sighs> Nothing else. <sighs> I think I'm gonna say goodbye now. If you watched all the way, tell me.